Matt Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Don't let others track what you do. Keep yourself safe at expressvpn.com slash unleashed. Uh, where do we even begin today? There is so, uh, so much to get to. Uh, we've got some really important COVID-19 news to share. Some really good news. Some not so great news. Uh, but bear with us because uh, there, there are reasons to, to hope. Uh, there are some good things happening. We'll get into that. But we also have some pretty amazing breaking news uh, on the presidential front. Really? Listen, listen to this. You had delivered this speech at the Golden Globes. Mm-hmm. And now there's all this buzz about a possible presidential run in 2020. I was looking for a way mm-hmm. to express what was going on in this moment in terms of gender Mm. and class and race. So this, I mean, I had asked you whether you thought 60 Minutes viewers would um, have this presidential I think if I still was leaving the question out there uh, Mm -hmm. and hadn't formally said, I am running for president of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, And you have, you have done that? Yeah. Wow. So. Oh my, (laughs) wow. That seems like a game changer to me. Uh, what what changed her mind? I think that when you have that many people whose opinions you value coming at you, mm-hmm. it's worthy of thinking about. If mm-hmm. God actually wanted me to run, wouldn't God kind of tell me? I do feel that I have heard that. I could be a leader of the wow. free world. Jeez. It's in my spirit. It's my DNA. Really? I am running for president of the United States. Mm-hmm. I mean, that... That's a little scary. Okay, then. It's a little scary. Uh, because, I mean... Because we didn't have enough going on. Right. Wow. All right. right. In, into everything else that we've got to worry about, now Oprah Winfrey, too, who is, you know, a heck of a lot more competent than Joe Biden. Let's oh, yeah. face it. Yeah. She, he, she's, he's, she's not a, a socialist, a Marxist, like uh, Bernie Sanders, and she's not out of her noodle... Like Joe Biden. At the State of the Union, if she were president, <clears throat> would would the senators and the congressmen be looking under their chairs to see if they, if get they to want go a car with a new car? <laughs> it might help her get things passed. It, it just might. I mean, she's so popular. That's wow. Okay, great. Neat. Okay. That's uh, that's frightening. Cool. That's frightening. All right, 2020. Thank you. It just gets better and better and better, doesn't it? Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Uh, the guy who is currently president uh, is is letting us know that there are uh, some very painful weeks ahead of us yeah. uh, in the coronavirus fight. Uh, and he says it's a matter of life and death. Here's, here's what he said yesterday. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. And then hopefully... As the experts are predicting, as I think a lot of us are predicting after having studied it so hard, you're going to start seeing some real light at the end of the tunnel. But this is going to be a very painful, very, very mm. painful two weeks. Mm. Oh, so that doesn't, honest there. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't sound good. A very, very painful uh, two weeks. So, I mean, they are making uh, incredible predictions. Yesterday they said... What, up to 240,000 deaths? Yeah, minimum 100,000. That's what Fauci said. Jeez. I mean, we're nowhere near that right now. Yeah. What was the death? What, what is we're the death 4, count this morning? Something. Are we at 4,000? <gasps> Jeez. And that is going up fast, though. It is. And how many infections? Are we over 200,000 now? I don't know. Um, Hang on. I'm too busy sneezing over here. Find my Sorry. daily count. Uh, let's see. So uh, your question was um, you, U.S. infections? Yeah, 188,000. Okay. And, and 4,059 deaths. Yeah. 75,000 infected in New York, New York State alone. 18,696 in New Jersey. And I don't know. You want Mario Cuomo to jump into this thing too, along with Oprah? Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Did I say Mario? Yeah. That was his dad, of course, who's already had his uh, his chance. 
Is Mario even alive anymore? I believe he just passed away I, a couple years ago. I believe ago. he did, yeah. So <laughs> Mario's not going to get... Okay, at least we know Mario is not getting in the race. Uh, but Andrew may. Oh, and Chris Cuomo has the coronavirus. He does, yes. Sheesh. I wonder where he got that. Of course, he lives in New York, probably. So uh, everybody's getting it in New York right now. Uh, it's just not going well for them. Um, 888-900-3393. So, yes, Fauci says we should prepare for 100,000 deaths. I, I don't know how you prepare for that. Uh, how does one prepare for that? But um, he also says that uh, we see some glimmers that social distancing is working. Uh, it's obviously still a very serious situation, he said, but we're starting to see glimmers that uh, we're actually having some dampening effect, he told CNN yesterday. Fauci cautioned that the U.S. hasn't seen a <clears throat> turnaround in cases yet, but he is hopeful that efforts to push mitigation is possibly slowing the rate. Yeah, I thought a lot of hope with uh, one of the charts that um, um, uh, we got, uh, what was it, Burks? Dr. Burks had a chart where it showed all 50 states, right? And it showed New York and New Jersey were crazy high, okay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it showed how Washington State started off high, you know, but, but even it was really low because they got under control quickly. And then, the, you know, basically 47, 48 states were just hugging the bottom there. I mean, New York and New Jersey are anomalies right now. Yeah. As far mm -hmm. as. Yeah. And so when you when you talk about the, the, the cases, what was it? Uh, one out of every three is up there. Mm -hmm. uh, something along those lines. So when you look at it in that perspective. Most of the country is doing much better yeah. than Washington the Northeast. Is. Washington State was the worst state by far for infections and for deaths. And it's tapering off there. So they're starting to see um, their their outbreak appears to be declining now. So while yesterday's pressure, so that's great. it was sobering, but it was also hopeful. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, and I mean, we should be sober about this. You know, it's uh, it's a sobering disease. Also, uh, another little glimmer of hope, the mortality rates, uh, they're saying now, have been overstated. Not as bad as originally thought. A new study by the medical journal, uh, The Lancet Infectious Diseases, which, you know, I, I usually wait for their swimsuit edition. Mm. Um. But I couldn't this year. There was just too much good stuff in it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been getting the last uh, few episodes, few issues of it. Okay. Did you get um, the uh, sneaker mm -hmm. phone with with your yeah, uh, subscription? Yeah, I did. With the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like those. While COVID nineteen is significantly deadlier than the flu, the death rate for the disease caused by the by the virus is lower than previously reported. At the beginning of March, World Health Organization announced that the death rate was about three point four percent. Although there was a wide expectation that the actual rate was lower due to the number of people who are asymptomatic or suffering only minor symptoms. Uh, but what they have found now is that um, a death rate of about 0.66%. 0.66%. Wow. Okay, that's not even 10 times what the flu mortality rate is. The number goes up to 1.38% when accounting for only confirmed cases. Okay? But uh, still, that is really hopeful because in Italy, the mortality rate's over 10% right now. And I think that's just because they have so many uh, elderly who are uh, infected with this thing. In part, thanks to the uh, the deliverer of food who had it and knew he had it and just kept delivering to people. That was helpful, wasn't it? Yeah. Also, I don't know if you're going to play the clip now, but Dr. Burks yesterday <laughs> was explaining how countries were caught kind of flat-footed by this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, China. Yeah, here's what he had to say. When this happened in Africa, and I think when you she looked at the China data originally and you said, oh, well, there's 80 million people are 20 million people in Wuhan and 80 million people in Hubei. 
and they come up with a number of 50,000, you start thinking of this more like SARS than you do this kind of global pandemic. I mean, I'll just be frank. That's when I looked at it, I was like, oh, well, this is not, you know, if as close as those quarters are, you know. So I think the medical community made interpreted the Chinese data they lied. as that this was serious but smaller than they, they anyone expected they lied. because the, I think probably we were missing a um, significant amount of the data now that when we see what happened to Italy and we see what happened to Spain. You're right. Because they lied. And you know what happened to China too. I mean, you know that their situation is much worse than they're letting on. Uh, and so... Yeah, they scammed the world is what they, they lied. They lied through their communist teeth and that's what they always do. So thank you, China. Thank you for that. That's great. Uh, also something else to watch out for. Like we don't have enough. Okay. We, we, we still don't have quite enough. Oh no. What else you got? <laughs> now me? you got to look out for uh, <laughs> scams yeah. that are <clears throat> sweeping the country over this. I mean, there's some, there, there are people preying on the elderly with this COVID-19 thing. So they're doing a Costco scam um, where Costco is supposedly uh, giving out $130 in Costco freebies as part of a, quote, COVID-19 stimulus package. And all you have to do to get the deal is click the link to take out to take a customer uh, survey. Don't click the link. It's a scam, and that's how they get your information. You click the link, and, and, and then you've got spyware in your computer, and it's, it's a nightmare. So when you get that Costco sc- scam, just delete it and let your elderly friends, neighbors, relatives know that this is not real. There is no such deal being offered by Costco. It's, uh, it, it's just preying on people, and it's really despicable. And I hope these people get caught and punished to the full extent of the law. That is really, really horrific. Um, Jonathan Turley has once again come to the uh, defense of the president. Um, on his Against his own network, CNN, as he uh, tweeted out, CNN is running a headline that Trump, quote, now, unquote, claims Easter was aspirational. I have criticized Trump's statements, but he never said Easter was a firm deadline as opposed to his hope. The unrelentingly negative spin on stories makes it difficult for viewers to trust the media. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Jonathan Turley calling out his own network CNN. I love it. I love that. Turley's, you know, he's he's honest, I think. Yeah, that's the word, yeah. He's honest. And he'll, he'll say what he thinks when it's against the president, and he'll say what he thinks when when he believes uh, defending the president is appropriate. And, of course, um, on the other side of this, a little hope and comfort came from MSNBC uh, <laughs> yesterday. Wow. This is kind of amazing. I love it. Uh, I never thought I'd see some anchor on MSNBC ask anybody to stop and pray live on television. Uh, but here's what happened. Bishop, um, 30 seconds for, for folks who weren't able to, to get to church uh, yesterday, I've never actually done this on the air. Uh, can you lead us in, in prayer for, for 30 seconds? Yes, I can. If our, our Father and our God, we bow our heads to you in humility, understanding that we are not competent in and of ourselves to handle this kind of global calamity. We look to you, Lord, to be the source, the strength, the help, the light that we need. Strengthen our first responders, strengthen even our broadcast people, strengthen all of us whose lives have been de- devastated and disrupted, and give us the peace that passes all understanding. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bishop Jake, it's always good to see you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Uh, that was really nice. Yeah, I'm, nice. I'm also impressed that he nailed it right at 30 seconds. Did he? I, I was watching the, <laughs> Did watching the clock there. That's pretty good. Bishop, you got 30 seconds. Eddie, Pray he did 30 now. seconds. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, that really, was amazing. That's nice. So, yeah. so big thanks to Craig Melvin mm. at MSNBC for, for that. Yeah, what got into him? Seriously, MSNBC. What happened there? Wow. Cool. I mean, what about the separation of church and state? Isn't MSNBC the 
the Democrat-run uh, media arm of, of the Democrat Party? Mm. <laughs> what about where's the separation there uh, that's called for in the U.S. Constitution? Huh. <laughs> right. Okay. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. I mean, the left, if they do it, it's perfectly fine. But if anybody on the right, heaven forbid anybody on the right, uh, mentions God in any context, anywhere, like, oh my gosh, don't have Mike Lindell come up to the podium and talk about how we need to get back to prayer and we need to get back to scriptures and, and believing in God again in this country. Because uh, yeah. that, 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 that violates was, everything we know. Right. That was the that was the same network that 24 hours earlier featured that tweet uh, from uh, uh, Ali Velshi. Right. Who who said that uh, Trump just called the my pillow guy up to the podium to the in the Rose Garden. You cannot make this stuff up. You know, mocking him uh, yep. because he was up there praising God. Um, by the way, uh, I responded to him and uh, I've been blocked. Uh, Ali Velshi has blocked me on Twitter. Oh, that's a heartbroken. Like a, should be a source of pride for you, right yeah. there. Yeah, no, I'm sad, really sad. That <laughs> Did Ali... Ali Velshi call out Nancy Pelosi when she said this? They ask me all the time, "What is your uh-huh. favorite this? What is your, your favorite, favorite that? that? What is your favorite, favorite that? that? Yeah. And when at one time, what is your favorite, favorite word? word. <laughs> and I said, my favorite, favorite word, word that, that is, is really, really easy. easy. It's easy. My favorite word is the word. The word. The the word. Is, is the word is, is the, word. the word, and that is and that everything. Is, it's everything. It says it all it's for all, us. All of it. The and word. you know the biblical reference. You I know do. the gospel I, reference of the word. The word. Yeah. But and, do and you? That, that's the question. Do you really know that? Yeah. So and uh, you know, some people uh, mm-hmm. are pointing out on Twitter mm-hmm. that uh, you know we played the uh, Oprah audio where she talked about God. They're going to go after her? You know? No, of course not. No? Absolutely oh. not. Mm. You know, and especially. When she's running for president and mentions that she turned to God to find out if she was supposed to run for president. Now, if that was Mitt Romney saying that. Mm. Oh, what? You just spoke to God? What? He came down and talked to you? Is that what you're saying? You had delusions of grandeur? You talked directly to God? Mm. Uh, No, they don't do that with her. They don't do that with her. Yeah, I just tweeted out. So be sure to share this with your friends today. Uh, I tweeted out at Keith Malinak. It just says, I just heard... At Pat Unleashed on at Blaze TV, play audio of Oprah talking about running for president. So make sure that you share that tweet with your friends today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, here it is. Here it is. Here's why she changed her mind. Because earlier she said she wasn't running. But this is why she changed, changed her mind. I think that when you have that many people whose opinions you value coming at you, yeah. it's worthy of thinking about. If God actually wanted me to run, wouldn't God kind of... Tell me. See? I do feel that I have heard that. Mm. I could be a leader of the free world. Mm. It's I don't think in so. In my spirit. It's my DNA. I am running for president of the United States. Mm. I mean, that's a lot. I of... mean, I heard it on the Pat Gray Unleashed show on Blaze TV today. Uh, By I, your friends. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it's okay for her to make all those spiritual references. Right? Especially when she's announcing she's running for president. Huh. Do you think that uh, the uh, political veteran that is uh, Marianne Williamson will be her veep? <laughs> uh, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that'd be quite a ticket. That's where she they? got her start. Get... Oprah, Marianne yeah. Williamson. Yeah, yeah that's that. right. And they're a team. All right. Uh, let me take 60 seconds to tell you about Genesis 950. This is an awesome product. I love it. Really easy to sell because it actually, actually works. Genesis 950. If you're thinking about replacing your carpets due to stains that you have from your pets or your kids or your grandkids, um, first, try Genesis 950, please. It really does work. It's an amazing pet stain and odor remover. And I love this fact about it. It's made in America. And again, that means it's not going to come with a label uh, made in Wuhan, China. And you're thinking, oh, crap, what is what kind of things are on this particular package right now you don't have to worry about that made in america and with water genesis 950 breaks down the bonds of stains and odors so they're gone for good it's antibacterial component removes pet stains from carpeting from padding it can be used uh, in carpet cleaning machines and it's so green it's it's safe for your family and pets 
It's so safe. You could use it as a topping for ice cream if you wanted to. I don't think you wanted to. It's not really designed for taste. So I mean, <laughs> look, if things get any worse. But if you're out of Hershey's syrup sure. and, you know. Uh, so is that, is, that, is that their new motto? Um, a good alternative for Hershey's? No, they're re- that's not theirs. Okay. No, no, I'm pretty sure that's just mine. Okay. So if you're tired of pet cleaners that don't work, It's time to try Genesis 950. One gallon of industrial strength Genesis 950 can make up to seven gallons of cleaner. It also disinfects and kills viruses. Mix one-third Genesis 950 with two-thirds water. Spray on the surface. Wipe clean with fresh water. Same instructions apply for use on floors. Um, For use on carpets, follow the instructions supplied with the product. It's uh, not just for stains either. You can disinfect and clean your entire house, your bathrooms, your kitchens, countertops, granite quartz, garage floors, virtually everything. Genesis 950 is available on Amazon.com. But if you order a gallon direct at Genesis950.com, you'll get a free spray bottle and a discount when you use the offer code Blaze. Okay? Genesis950.com. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Triple Eight. 93. So, uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about with the COVID-19 thing. But also with this Oprah situation, I mean, I think that's a real concern for the president. Now, he said, if you, if you remember when she was first talking about this, uh, after the speech at the Golden Globes, I think it was, he said he'd love for her to run because he'd like to beat her too. Uh, and he'd beat her easily. And he knows her really well. You remember that? Uh, and I'm not, I'm not sure that's true. I'm really not. She is super popular for whatever reason with people. I think she's a little freaky. Uh huh. Well, she went to the same church as <clears throat> Jeremiah Wright, right? Right. Pastor. Right. And she's not the one that I wasn't there those Sundays. Right. Or or did uh, now I can't. I don't remember. remember how she explained that away. I think she left before Obama did. You're right. Yeah. I yeah. think she might have gotten fed up with him. Uh, a little bit before Obama, or she just thought, okay, this guy's a little too wild for me, and and she left. And yeah, she was probably thinking, <clears throat> she's probably thinking, there's no way I could ever be president of the United States if I still go to this church. <laughs> but Barack Obama proved you wrong, Oprah. <laughs> he sure did. I mean, can you imagine if that was a Republican listening to stuff that was KKK oriented, racist, uh, z- xenophobic? Uh, you would you'd never be elected president, but somehow, somehow get the guy got elected anyway, despite the fact that he was in that church for twenty years, and that particular pastor married he uh, Barack Obama to his wife Michelle. Uh, it's crazy, it's crazy. But um, are we concerned now about November? Even more concerned than we <laughs> than we otherwise would have been with all the COVID nineteen stuff that's hurt the economy, and now you got Oprah Winfrey swooping in here. It's just. Uh, not good. Uh-uh. Triple eight. I mean, it, can 2020 get any worse? <laughs> is there anything else that we can add to this? And I'm sure the answer is yes. So maybe I shouldn't be asking that question because <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've seen the answer is yes. It can get a little bit worse mm-hmm. or a lot worse. I mean, it, at the end of 2019, we were thinking, okay, uh, I know it's going to get worse, but how much worse can it get? Mm-hmm. And then we've seen a lot worse. So how would that work? Would she just show up at the Democratic <clears throat> National convention and say hey i want to be nominated or would she run yeah for my understanding as an independent? Is, she's got to be she's got to be attached to a party yeah to appear on ballots I, I from what i understand the dnc uh powers that be are kind of throwing their weight behind her because they know that biden is losing it and they know that sanders can't win and so behind the scenes i, I think they're they're cooking up something for the convention because she obviously can't enter any of the primaries. So it would have to be something that happens at the convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, 888 and at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Good question here from a Major League Baseball player. Okay. Um, let's see. This is... I don't know if it's so much of a question. He's just ready to go. Let's play. We'll wear masks if we have to. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this is uh, Nick Ahmed. Yeah. While speaking to reporters uh, in a conference call, Arizona Diamondback shortstop 
consider the viability of players wearing masks on the field. All right. It's like, okay, can we just wear a mask and yeah. start playing baseball here, please? Let's do this. Can we just please, for the love of heaven, <laughs> play baseball? I kind of don't blame him. Yeah, how much, uh, I mean, baseball is a game of <clears throat> social distancing. Yeah, you, you got you, you got you gotta far tag, enough away. You got to tag somebody. I mean, the catcher's right there with the batter and the ump, I guess. But just test them every day, like Arthur Blank was saying the NFL should do. But let's say the first baseman sneezes. Uh, the second baseman's far enough away. He's not going to get those uh, right. droplets, right? And, and give you more incentive to lead <laughs> off. Take He's a, 90 feet away. Take a bigger lead, runner. <laughs> you know, if, if Freddie Freeman, the <coughs> Braves' first baseman, starts sneezing, yeah, you should probably steal. Yeah, probably. You should probably take off. He said, I'll be up for anything at this point to be able to play. Uh, if they said, hey, you can start games whenever it is, May 15th or June 1st, but you have to wear masks. If that's the only thing holding us back, then sure, guys would do it. Right. As much as that would be extremely weird and strange, we'd be open to it. <laughs> right. Hopefully it wouldn't have to last a long time. Uh, but to get more games in and get more games on TV for fans to watch, we're all for that. Right. Thank you, my friend. Can you, yes, uh, thank like, you. Seriously, there's so many people on lockdown at home. Can we just have day baseball right now? Just wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be start great? It right now, you wanna you oh, wanna that'd be great. bring the seriously. country out of this stupor, out of a malaise. Yes. Then let's yep. have every team plays during the day. Well, and night too. But I mean, it's just like we could we could half the games during the day. I guess he saw a screenshot from Korean baseball. Oh yeah, they were doing an inter squad game. Yeah, and they were they were wearing masks. Well, it can be done. Two, see, two players and the coach were wearing masks. And he's like, yeah, I'd do that. Let's get the let's get this show on the road. Let's wear a mask. Seriously, and baseball just said in their conference last week, <laughs> their their conference call, the commissioner said nothing's off the table. Okay, play ball. Let's do it. I'm ready. Seriously, I'm. I mean, any sport would be great at this point, but baseball—that would be awesome. That would be awesome. That would help. Also, the NFL is determined. I like this because <clears throat> we had Kirk Herb Street that just about crushed our will yesterday. I can't. It, it just about crushed my will to live when he said, uh, "We don't need to play NFL or college yeah. football this." Shut up! Yeah. Hashtag shut up, Kirk. Shut up, Kirk. You you don't have to you don't have to call the games, okay? Yeah. Why don't you stay home? Why don't you stay down? Uh, stay yeah. On lockdown. Well, yeah. Why don't you house. do that? Okay, Kirk. Hashtag put that in your pipe. If that's Kirk. your real name, Kirk, it's a stupid name. Well, just for that Kirk, other Kirks, that's not a stupid name for you. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, just Kirk Herb Street. Yeah. Because what a what a dummy that, that. I mean, that's. I mean, come on. That's a synonym for dumb. <laughs> You look like an idiot. Kirk the Dirk, Herb Street. <laughs> Kirk the Dirk? Yes. Don't, make, don't make me Google <laughs> Dirk, because now I want to know. I think it... I was going for Dork, and but it didn't really rhyme, well, uh, so it wound um, up Dirk. I don't know. Dirk is a short dagger of a, of a kind of formerly carried by Scottish <laughs> doesn't, Highlanders. Doesn't really work, does yeah, it? Yeah, it doesn't a, really work. You're, a, you're, you're Kirk <laughs> the Dull Dirk. I think it's not a sharp... Uh, dagger. I mean, there's so much uh, going on right now that I, I can't figure out my insults right now. Just, <laughs> That's where we're at. That's too, many, we're at. too many insults to go around. But the NFL says... <laughs> the NFL, we've got to get to this in a minute. Because yeah. uh, determ- they're determined to start the 2020 season on time. With no contingency plans. They're not saying, well, if we get the clearance from the CDC by May 15th. No, they're saying we're doing this. Bless your heart. Roger Goodell, I, you you deserve He's to be cheered. He's finally earned his money. You could be cheered everywhere you go from now on. Yeah, because... Patriots fans, take note, okay? Yes. You should now clap at the draft if we ever have a draft where you're invited to attend. <clears throat> also, we want to hear from you on this Oprah thing. Um, are you are you more concerned now? 888 thirty More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Doesn't sound anything like Radio Network. Again, I think we already determined that doesn't sound anything like Iron Man. Correct. Okay. Uh, Triple Eight. It's a good thing it doesn't. You know, Triple Eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three, and it Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Got some tweets here before we get to Jeffy and chewing the fat from B Devo B De Bodine. Uh, I too have had that feeling that I should run for president of the United States. It was right after I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. 
Well, that'll do it. <laughs> you know, you wake up feeling really good and you think, I'm going to run for president. From Munch, the Virginia blackface governor issued Executive Order 55, which is a stay-in-place order until June 10th. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. That's insane. Guess when the GOP primary is? June 9th. Oh, Coincidence? Oh, oh. I think not. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Texas extended mm. till May 4th now. No, is it? No school in Texas uh, till at I, least May 4th. Does anybody believe school is going to be back at all this year? Because I don't. Scotty Sweatman, guys, in baseball and other sports, everyone touches the same ball. Ah, okay. Yeah, I kind of forgot that. That's a good little. point. That is you a good point. You make a good point. <laughs> you should a, tweet that out. Somewhat important point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. They wear gloves. Good point, Rob. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Not on the throwing. There's hand. just a lot of good points being made on both sides right now. Look, here's what you do. You keep you keep uh, handy wipes. You keep these. Clorox you wipe off wipes the ball. In, yeah. in your back yeah. pocket. You got and don't your batting, touch your eyes. Batting gloves in one pocket. Right. Clorox wipes in the other. Okay. And after every play, you just uh, you wash up and. Can you imagine? If that's what it takes, I'm all for it. If, yep. th- if that'll get baseball on the field, do it. Yep. If, if, if the second baseman has to wear an N95 mask, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Conserve Lady 1791. So what we, should tell, uh, what we should do is tell China, since you lied and cost our economy trillions, we no longer owe you a penny. Yeah. I, I, That's a, I love that, that. I like it. Yep. Love That's that justice. idea. That is awesome. Uh, all right. Also... From notion mongering, monger of notions. It's scary when someone on MSNBC calls for prayer. It can only mean this is the apocalypse. <laughs> yes. Oh, from USSA News. Oh my gosh. MSNBC is asking for prayers. What's next? Jeffy asking for a salad. Well, okay. Repent. The end is near. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that can't happen, right, Jeffy? I mean, that um, cannot happen. That can't happen. They're they're. There's a, n- under no circumstance would you ever ask for a salad. Am I right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> uh, so, so what do you make of the uh, what do you make of the Oprah news? Uh, pretty incredible if it's true. I don't know that uh, if it's true. Uh, Joe, did you hear? Well, I, I mean, listen no, to her. I think listen. that when you have that many people whose opinions mm-hmm. you value coming at you, it's worthy of thinking mm-hmm. about if god actually mm-hmm. wanted me to run wouldn't god kind of tell me sure. i do feel yeah. that i have heard that she i has heard it. could wow. be a leader of the free world huh it's in my spirit it's my dna i am running for president of the united states I mean, what more do you need uh, i mean this is exactly maybe a problem. non non-edited version of that is that what you need <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's possible, but this could be the maybe reason a, why a, a non-April Fool's uh, version maybe. of that is is maybe, maybe what you need. <laughs> possible. Uh, if well, that were on April second, you, know, hey. you might think, "Oh my gosh, a- Oprah is running for president." On April first, you might think, "No, no, she's no. not." No, <laughs> that's why I'm not seeing this on any website anywhere because uh, it's not true. <laughs> now, no, I mean, I thought maybe that's why Joe yeah. Biden released his, is going to do his podcast now. Can uh, you know, <laughs> that's his podcast. Here's the deal. Right. I can't wait. Jeffy, oh, Jeffy, can I can I read the message you just sent me about uh, 15 minutes ago? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. He goes. Uh, we tricked him. Uh, I, I didn't hear the uh, audio earlier. Is Oprah really running? I can't find it I, anywhere. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was at that first few minutes. I was like, no way. No now, way! That be. Now, what normally we? we'd carry that out through the whole show, mm-hmm. but sure. because of everything that's going on, I thought, yeah. eh, we'll just have a little bit of fun and then we'll end it. Um, I, I got it because after 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 I sent that, in fact, the next G, G chat to Keith is gotcha. Never mind, I got. It. <laughs> <laughs> Happy uh, April Fool's Day, y'all! All thank right. you. So, oh yeah, happy sound yeah. means it's the happy time of the week uh, when Jeffy chews the fat. Thank, you. thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Great news, uh, great news. Uh, Suzanne Summers, uh, who is now uh, seventy-three, she'll be seventy-four this year. Wow. Uh, she oh. says, "I know." She said, "Remember uh, when she turned seventy-three? She gave us uh, uh, this great picture of herself on Instagram, where uh, she was looking. I mean." Hot. 
Did you, <laughs> did you just say great picture? <laughs> Dude, is this she April is, Fool's uh, Day? Is this April Fool's Day, Jeffy? <laughs> she has said that she wants to post uh, for Playboy on her 75th birthday. Uh, so we got a year and a half. Oh, man. Oh, no. to wait. oh yeah. man. Didn't Dolly Parton just say that, too? She wants yes, to be in. She did. Yeah. Yes, she did. Now, uh, uh, Suzanne has posed in 80 and 84. Uh, so she's ready to rock and roll already again. And speaking of Dolly Parton, mm. Mm-hmm. Again, you said uh, wants to pose uh, this next year, right? She turned seventy-five. No, this later this year. She wants to be a Playboy. <clears throat> She's also kicking off a uh, a little video series. Uh, on Facebook and YouTube, uh, where she's going to read bedtime stories uh, to us uh, every night, uh, starting this week, starting tomorrow. She's going to kick it off with a little engine that could once a week, bedtime stories with Dolly Parton. And mm. she told us about it while she was sitting in her bed. Okay. Hello, I'm Dolly Parton, the book lady from the Imagination Library. I want you to join me April the 2nd when I start Good Night with Dolly. I'm going to be reading some stories from the Imagination Library. It's only once a week, though. I mean, I hope mean that's... does she look great for 74 years yes, old? Yes, she does. That's yes, she does. crazy. She admits to a lot of plastic surgery, but still... Yeah. She's got a great surgeon because usually after that much work, you I mean, it, you, you look like a cartoon. She <laughs> doesn't. No, no. Well, she's close. You think? She's I don't think so. Close. I thought she looked pretty Very good close. for 74 or 70, I mean, almost I'm, 75. Am I still buying the Playboy? <laughs> yes. But. <sighs> of course. Of course you did are. You, did okay. you miss the, uh, I don't know if you saw it, I mean, the uh, Elton John uh, coronavirus concert, the I Heart Living Room concert for America <laughs> this past weekend. Yeah, with, uh, with the big stars, you know, Alicia Keys and, and my favorite mm-hmm. and more. But uh, <laughs> what uh, Elton John does a special concert, big deal. It's on Fox. It's on I Heart, and he comes out and says he begins. I have to be quarantined in the only house I've ever been in without a piano. We can't get Elton John a piano. <laughs> During the coronavirus, you can't get Elton John a piano. What house is he in? Is he in his own home? I don't know where he's quarantined at. He ended up playing some little Casio that is that belongs to (laughs) one of his kids at the end of the show. But I'm Mm. I mean, I Heart and Fox can't get Elton John a piano. Deliver it in hazmat suits. Uh, Really weird. It's ridiculous. don't, right? Huh, yeah. And we had with Garth Brooks uh, last <clears throat> week. He decided that he and Trisha Yearwood were going to do the uh, an Instagram uh, live concert. Crashed Facebook, and so CBS and Facebook are like, "Well, you know, we'll just do another one next week." Now that we know, so he's having a big uh, live uh, coronavirus show tonight, actually, on uh, CBS. Looking for, I mean, people are doing stuff all over America trying to help. So, I mean, that's, you know, good for them. But you'd think that maybe Mm -hmm. you let Facebook know uh, if you're Garth Brooks. You say, you know, I was thinking doing a little show. You got to be prepared for some people watching. There's going to be, you know, millions, like over 5 million in the next hour tuning in. Maybe you be ready for that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, other great news, too. Another, I feel like another, uh, you know, old guy uh, list of uh, stories so far. Uh, Bob Dylan uh, Mm -hmm. has released his first track in eight years. Uh, yeah, 78 and, and year old what a track it is it's murder i mean it's called murder most foul and the the free preview that they posted uh which sounds i mean whew, you pat here you're not going to be able to get enough of the free preview <laughs> bob dylan is roll it kick it one time with bob this is sing it bob i the answer, my friend, is... Because a dark day in Dallas, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> November 63. Oh, right, free preview up. No. Nope. How bad is this? How bad How, is that? Oh, I man. mean, it's cutting it. Uh, it's, about, it's about the killing of JFK in now, 1963. Oh, the that's good bad. Dude. Now, is good that Bob dude, Dylan yeah. or is it Floyd the Barber uh, from Mayberry <laughs> RFD? Which, who is that? Have you ever seen the two of them together at a party? Because no. I have not. Yeah, I have no. not. Fair point. Oh, Opie. Oh, you're such a fine boy. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Uh, it's the same guy. It's the same guy. Same guy. What's that actor's name? Floyd Lawson. Good, 
the good news no, about that Dylan song, though, uh-huh. is that it's only 17 minutes long. You're right. You're right. So, it only man. it only lasts excruciatingly forever. <laughs> so Howard McNear died in 1969, or did he? Or did he? Bum, yeah, bum, did he? Bum. Hmm. Right. Uh, plenty of news from uh, New York and uh, JFK, of course. Uh, you know, the John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts uh, got their $25 million from the coronavirus relief package, which was, you know, very nice. And we were all happy and thrilled that they got yeah. $25 million. Uh, <clears throat> And then a few hours later, uh, their uh, president, Deborah Rutter, got everybody on a, a conference call and said, yeah, that doesn't mean you're getting paychecks. Yeah, uh, fire, uh, fired their special. whole orchestra. Friday's their last day. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, even on the conference call, she said, you know, hey, people are uh, people are kind of unhappy that we're getting the money and if they think it should be going to places like hospitals. You think? <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, no kidding. But 25 million bucks. And she also said, but that doesn't keep us whole. Maybe we ought to rethink what we're spending at the JFK Center. In uh, there is a Republican congressman who is trying to take it back, who is trying to avoid wow. uh, the 25 million to the Kennedy Center. And, and luck. that money was conditional on them not firing their employees. What's the first thing they do? Fired their entire orchestra. So they should take that money back. Yeah, good luck. I yeah, mean, I hope it happens. I know. It right. won't happen probably, but. I know. I know. Because it's a special. They need it to stay afloat. Right. right. Uh, more out of NYC, too. You know, when we worked there, uh, you know, we all took the subway from time to time. I don't know if Pat ever took it more than once or twice. But not once. We sure did. Not and, once. Uh, wow. Well. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. This this video of NYC Subway uh, the uh, the other afternoon, you might want to take it because uh, it is looking good. Oh yes, yes, I, I can go back now. Stroke. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm going back now just to ride that. If, if you're watching on Blaze TV, I mean there is no one on this. Literally, literally it is nobody. Clean. <laughs> It is clean. Wow. Later on the video, it shows where he gets off on the platform. It looks like a like it was just built. Well, seriously. I mean, do you want to touch any of that stuff? No way. That's well, where mean, all the New Yorkers are getting it. They're touching <laughs> things that have been touched <laughs> by some infected person, and they're getting the virus. I know. Look, you watch, uh, watch it here as he gets off. I mean, the platform wow. looks brand new. Look at this. There's no rat. Oh. That is really amazing. Right? That's New York City, where there are 8 million people on that island. I know. On Manhattan. That's Jeez. Oh, man. That... I, I hope that's real. I hope that's real. I'll tell you that. And then we also have the Empire State Building, who is saying, yeah, yeah. sending out their uh, beacon, mm-hmm. uh, spinning around like it, the, the city is under siege. Uh, but the owner says, no, 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 no. We're turning the... We're turning the red light on each night to pay tribute to all the heroes on the front line of the coronavirus. That, that's epidemic. a creepy tribute. I'll tell that you sure that. is. That's a, and that's what a lot that's, of New Yorkers are saying. Can you do something less creepy uh, to, for a tribute? That'd be nice. That would be nice, yeah. yes. And uh, we've mm. also heard during uh, the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic that uh, uh, we've heard from the Baltimore mayor. Uh, asking people to stop shooting each other so mm-hmm. that the hospital beds could be used for uh, coronavirus patients. And now the uh, Houston mayor, <laughs> Sylvester Turner, has a message for, uh, for crooks and criminals Until during the this The coronavirus is resolved. Criminals take a break. Okay? <laughs> okay? Stay home. Okay. Right, sure. Okay, stay home. And don't commit any crimes. Yeah. And that way they'll stay safe and out of jail. And police officers will stay safe and can go home to their families. Okay? Okay. So everybody right, chill. Sure. Everybody chill. Jeez. Crooks, criminals, you chill. chill. We, we should, we should have Wait said that before. Wait the coronavirus is over. Would have saved a lot of heartache <laughs> if he would have said that before. Hey, could everybody <laughs> stop committing crimes, please? Why didn't he think of Do that? Do you mind? I mean, you can go right back to it when this thing is over. Start killing people and stealing stuff again. But for just a while, can you please knock it off? That is okay? it's a little, <laughs> it's it's a good message. It's a, little stuff. it's a good message. Chill. It, it is mm-hmm. a good message. Chill. It is a good message. You'd think it'd be a good message to have if you know you weren't arresting pastors yeah. uh, you know, around the country. <laughs> right. You weren't uh, saying churches uh, are uh, non-essential uh, buildings. That kind of thing. That, that might yes. help a little. Right. Just might help. Other, but if somebody mentions God... Uh, in front of the White House, uh, separation of church and state. We can't have that. We got to break away. Break away. Somebody mentioned the Bible. Uh, we can't have that. It's really incredible. Hey Jeffy, and it's 
Hold on, man. Uh, I'm kind of liking you with the uh, the facial hair going there. Uh, mm. How long are you gonna let that go? <laughs> it's been a few days. I put a poll out. You know, I put a poll out thinking about having the uh, pandemic, uh, you know, quarantine beard. Uh huh. Yeah, we're we gonna get a, a full beard from you. you think? I'm, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. There's there may be uh, uh, one person who voted on my Twitter poll that uh, you know is against it. Uh, so we'll uh, see how long that lasts. Uh, and does that vote uh, supersede all others? Uh, she thinks so. <laughs> uh, she knows so. She definitely thinks so. And we're gonna talk a little bit of sports before we uh, before we get done here. I know that uh, uh, you know we're all dying for sports, and maybe we end up with baseball with maybe like a you know the golf ball washer at the home plate. <laughs> so after every pitch, they just wash that bad boy at the plate and send it back out. Mm-hmm. But uh, Minnesota head football coach uh, P.J. Fleck. Uh, has said that, uh, and you're, this isn't going to make you happy, but uh, normal isn't coming back. Normal uh, everybody isn't chasing, coming back. Isn't, everybody wants to keep chasing this norm, mm. but uh, normal's not coming back. Uh, you know, look, it might be better. It might be better at the end, but uh, normalcy, normal is not coming back. There's so I mean, get over it. Is PJ Fleck Kreskin now, or yes. what's yes, he, he basing is. this on? Yes, yes, he's why basing don't you, it on. Why don't you mind your own business, PJ? <laughs> And stick to coaching your stupid gophers. Okay? Stupid gophers. Congratulations to, to uh, Tom Brady, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've made it official mm-hmm. that uh, he will wear number 12 now. Oh, oh, and did you uh, see this jersey? That, did you see the kid who did the science project a year ago that, that found Tom Brady guilty of cheating? But it turns out that kid is a Buccaneers fan. <laughs> and so now he's like, nah, it was Belichick. Belichick did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you. 888 thirty-three ninety-three. Uh, more Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. How's this for being kicked where you live? Um, doctors and nurses in emergency rooms all across the country working their butts off right now under really terrible conditions, under... You know, the strain of, am I going to get this thing too? And then am I going to contract it and spread it to my family? Uh, Working long, long hours without all the right equipment that they need. Now, uh, their employer just slashed uh, their pay and benefits by 20%. Alteon Health, uh, a staffing company backed by private equity firm Frazier Healthcare Partners, will cut salaries time off, and retirement benefits uh, for doctors and nurses. Is that unbelievable? Wow. <laughs> wow. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, 888 Also, at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, we want to just to update the story from the very beginning of the show um, where Oprah made, made this announcement. <laughs> had delivered this speech at the Golden Globes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now there's all this buzz about a possible presidential run in 2020. I was looking for a way to express what was going on in this moment in terms of gender yeah. and class mm-hmm. and race. Sure. So this, I mean, I had asked you whether you thought 60 Minutes viewers would um, have this presidential run I think run if thing. I still was leaving the question out there mm-hmm. but uh, you're not. and hadn't formally said i am running for president of the united states mm-hmm. um, and you have you have done that yeah yeah oh okay well because <laughs> you know a while ago you said you weren't running what changed your mind i think that when you have that many people <clears throat> whose opinions you value coming at you yeah it's worthy of thinking about sure if god actually wanted sure. me to run wouldn't god kind of tell me i think he would yeah. i do feel that i have heard that oh, wow. i could be a leader of the free world <laughs> could you mm. it's in my spirit it's my dna yeah. i am running for president of the united states mm-hmm. yep. yeah wow. except except no um wow. oh, april no. fools huh. so just having a little fun <laughs> I wonder how much money oprah pack raked in the last hour <laughs> none from our audience i'm pretty sure uh oh, yeah. michelle marie tweets Oh my gosh, you got me. I live alone. No one to play an April Fool's joke here, but you guys got me good. Too early for a Bailey's? <laughs> Never. <laughs> not for Jeffy, I'm sure. No, no, it is not. Uh, Jeffy's 18 Spoons tweets, I hate you guys so much. You totally got me with the Oprah thing. <laughs> I forgot today's April 1st. Well played, gentlemen. Uh, American Pride tweets, is Bernie Sanders still running? 
or alive? <laughs> Haven't heard anything from him for a while. And hopefully he's, never will again. He's social distancing, so you're out. That, <laughs> yes, yes. His and entire campaign is social distancing. From Occam's Electric Razor, I don't know how long uh, Jeffy's Chewing the Fat pod- podcast is slated to run, but I humbly submit his next one be called... First of all, oh, first with of Jeff all. Fisher. With Jeff Fisher, I yeah, like I like that. that. I, like, I like that. That's a good name. I oh, like oh, oh, oh! By the way, Jeffy, thanks so much for spending time with me on my podcast at the mic. Everyone has been commenting, loved hearing from you. We were supposed to do another one where you just lay out nothing but all your lifelong Jeffy scams. People, <laughs> people want to hear about every last scam that you have. Uh, you know. <laughs> Well, there, there. I know that there are several, but you know, we were talking earlier today about the scams that are happening right now uh, uh, online. People trying to scam people, like the Costco the, thing. Uh, well, I got one yesterday. Uh, text to me saying, "Poor service advisory. Wi-Fi speeds have been affected by the pandemic. We're giving away iPhone 11s to improve customer satisfaction." And oh, then there's a come on. And then there's a link. I'm not clicking on that link. Oh, and no. we highly recommend no one else click on that link either. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, my I mean, Wi-Fi speeds have been pretty good. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not the judge of anybody uh, here. I, I'm just saying that these people who are taking advantage of the elderly under these circumstances, there is a special place in South Hell that is reserved for you <laughs> where the furnace burns a little bit hotter. Oh. And you're consumed a little bit longer. Uh, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's a good rule of thumb. If you receive a text or an mm. email from someone that you don't know or didn't initiate contact with, mm-hmm. don't click the link that's yeah, embedded the in the link. Right. Don't click the link. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll be sorry if you do, because uh, I'm sure it's embedded with all manner of spyware. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Let's go to Karen in Alabama. Hey, Karen, you're on the blaze. Hi, thank Hi. you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Uh, long time all thing Blaze fan. Um, I had a thought uh, a week or two ago. I was wondering what your take is. Do you believe that this coronavirus could very well be a preliminary beta test for or toward Agenda 21? Mm. Uh, I don't appreciate the the uh, call, Karen. It's it's interesting i i don't think the actual virus is that but they could certainly be taking advantage of it uh now that it's here with the old uh rahm emanuel thing never let a good crisis go to waste and that's what they're doing here and yeah we've got to be really concerned about the freedoms we're losing because they're going away daily will they come back i don't know government's not very good at giving back power they've once taken takes you know special leadership in order to do that why do you want people to die? <laughs> yeah, that's wow. that's the thing. Dude, yeah, I know. It's all for the, the safety of the children. Uh, right. For the children, especially the 12-year-old boy children. <laughs> I love the children. Why do you want them to die? That's horrifying. What kind of freak would want the 12-year-old boy children to die? Uh, 888 Oh, we said a few minutes ago that we've got some good news coming from the NFL. And uh, so far, they are saying this, and I hope they stick to it, because I could foresee a scenario under which they don't. But in the midst of all of this madness, the NFL delivered a surprisingly unflinching message yesterday. They are not, not only planning to have a full season this year, they're expecting that the season starts on schedule and they play the whole thing. Do you love that? <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, I love that. A lot of people were complaining yesterday when the NFL announced that with the addition of the two extra playoff games, you're uh-huh. going gonna to expand the field, um, that one of the games would be on Nickelodeon. Yeah. This, okay, yes. but it's, okay, but it's... Okay, but... And it, that's not an April Fool's joke. That's not an April Fool's joke, but everybody needs to relax on, on two fronts. Number one, it's a simulcast of the CBS game. Yes. Okay, so... Mm-hmm. It's going to be on CBS. If you must watch it on CBS, it's going to be there as well. I thought it was going to be geared, though, for younger kids. The so. pregame show will be. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Right. That's cool. But here's the thing. <clears throat> we don't know when we're going to have professional sports again. 
We haven't had it for three weeks. You could play every game on what? PBS C-SPAN 3. <laughs> I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just want my just professional want sports. But just so you know, it won't be exclusive to Nickelodeon. It'll also be on CBS. So all is right. Uh, Executive Vice President of the NFL, Jeff Pash, said, Our planning, our expectation is fully directed at playing a full season, starting on schedule and having a full regular season and full set of playoffs. Uh huh. A am I certain? I'm not certain that I'll be here tomorrow, but I'm <laughs> planning on it. And the same thing. We are planning on having a full season. I love that. Yeah, you hear that, Kirk Herbstreet? Yeah. The NFL's not <laughs> listening to you. Bastard. <laughs> Golly. Uh, why uh, would you even say, if that's, I, especially if that's your livelihood, why mm -hmm. would someone like Kirk Herbstreet even say, no, we shouldn't be having any kind of football, college, or pro? He's showing what a responsible human being he is. Yep. That's my livelihood, and I'm saying we shouldn't be playing that season. That's what happens when you got millions of dollars in the bank and you don't really need to continue to make any more money because you have plenty to last you a lifetime. That's you can right. pretend like you're altruistic and your only concern is for <laughs> everyone else on the planet. <laughs> it's nice. It's a nice. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's a nice place to be. I'd, I'd like to be there myself. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, not? No, not exactly. Not exactly in the same place as Kirk. I can't uh, even so, see that place. I know. Uh, also, Canada, <laughs> Canada last week urged us because we were we were saying we're going to put some troops at the uh, Canadian border, uh, and Canada is urging us not to do that in the strongest terms possible. Why do they care? Prime Minister, I, th that's what I don't know. What's the I mean, big what deal? do you care? It's I, our border, man. I know. We're, we're not, we're not going to cross into Canada. Relax. Justin Trudeau said Canada and the United States have the longest unmilitarized border in the world, and it's very much in both of our interests for it to remain that way. Uh, why don't you let us decide that? Canadian yes. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland said, what we have said is we really do not believe that at all, that there would be a public health justification for you to take this action. Well, I'll tell you what, A, uh, how about we decide what's necessary and what's not for our own security? A, they're crusty. Uh, that is, come on. Wow. I mean, what would it hurt? I, I think they're just concerned about the optics. Uh -huh. Like, we're worried about Canadians spilling across the no, border. No, we're worried about one Canadian spilling across the border, and his name is Justin Trudeau. Yeah. <laughs> Stay up there, hoser. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, but, I mean, the nerve of them telling us what to do and uh, what's good for uh, us, and we don't, it's not necessary. Yeah, why don't you let us decide? <laughs> and then you can decide what's necessary to protect your curling and other stupid Canadian things you do, whatever it is. Thank you. I can't oh, you. believe we're even questioning that. I mean, we're stopping people going from state to state now. Yeah. Oh, and, yes. And they're gonna, you're going to question us at our border of the country? No, thank you. Was it Vermont or was it Rhode Island, I think, that well, is Island, pulling over New Yorkers, Rhode right? Island. Yeah, mm -hmm. Rhode Island. You know, I when, when I... stopping people coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I think even Texas is now, too. Yeah, Louisiana. They're not letting you in from Louisiana. I, I remember joking when I moved from South Carolina to New Jersey. It was partly because my South Carolina license plate was kind of rusted on my car, and I couldn't really get it off. And so I put uh, the New Jersey plate on top of that. And so I basically had the two license plates. You couldn't see the South Carolina one behind the New Jersey one. But I thought, you know, I might need this someday. If I were trying to escape from New Jersey, I might need to get into South Carolina again. Here we are. Here we are. That's an actual thing now. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, we're realizing a lot of things that uh, I, I don't think we would have ever contemplated before I this know. particular crisis. Because you think, okay, well, why why wouldn't we be able to do this or that? Why, how would you, you know, some of the revelations that have been made in, in the Bible, in Revelation, like you can't. There's there's something that references not being able to travel uh, from one continent to another. You can't go across the ocean. And you think, well, what? How? What would stop that? Uh, I don't know. A travel ban? No. <laughs> How about everybody's locked down their countries and you can't yeah. fly from the U.S. to Europe or the U.S. to Asia? Uh, you can totally see how all of this stuff oh, yeah. can happen I mean now. Pompeo yesterday told everybody, if you're an American outside of the country, get home now because flights are going to stop soon. 
I so, can't. I can't. Uh, frankly, I can't believe they haven't already. I know. I, I agree with that 100. percent But I mean, the airlines are going to shut down. There's going to be no travel. Unbelievable. Yeah. So good luck. Yeah. Good luck. This this may. I mean, what the president and uh, Fauci warned us about yesterday is that this is going to get worse before it gets better, mm-hmm. and the next two weeks are going to be a rough ride. And so uh, we got to buckle up a little bit. Yeah. They're they're right now estimating the peak. Or did you hear that CNN estimating? Okay, mm-hmm. estimating the peak around April fifteenth. Okay, so, so that's exactly two weeks from today. So we're hoping that Phew. we can get through two weeks. Americans can get through anything. We can certainly well, get through fourteen days. Absolutely, right? but we need that end date, right? I mean, we do. We yeah, absolutely need an end date. If it's got to be a, something it, to work uh, for. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have to have an end date. Otherwise, it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. As long as we can binge watch uh, certain shows on Netflix, oh, yeah. we can get through two weeks. Tiger Absolutely. King. Do you, think, do you know, you everybody's gonna, been talking about yeah, you're that. Gonna, you're going to get into that? So I... You checked it out? Checked it out. How was it? That thing is a freak show. <laughs> it is... It's an absolute freak show. Everyone in it, including the documentarian, what? are all freaks. Jeffy, do you watch no. that? I mean, do you love it? Uh, I have not started yet. I did. I just finished. You know, I had Ozark to get through this weekend, and so uh, okay, you know, now that I've done. Time, time. Okay, well, stop, stop. It's definitely the apocalypse. Mm. We okay. found not only a TV show Jeffy hasn't started, but everybody else in the world has already seen. Mm-hmm. I had Except Ozark Jeffy. To get- I had Ozark to get to. I'm sorry. Season three of Ozark was more important than Tiger King. Like you're watching one at a time thing? Come on. We hold know on, you're watching hold on, hold on, about it. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Have you checked your temperature lately? You checked it? <laughs> I, I barely, I, I haven't left the house. I am quarantined, man. So I'm good. I'm fine. All right, good. All right. 888 thirty More Pat Grandlidge coming up. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being with us, Triple Eight Nine Hundred Thirty Three Ninety Three, and it Pat Unleashed uh, on Twitter, where Deborah's point of personal privilege tweets. Right, right uh, quick point of privilege. Yes. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Okay. Point mm-hmm. of personal privilege. Yes. 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 All right. Go ahead. Please do not mm-hmm. use gendered language to c- to, to address <laughs> everyone. Can we go back to those days, please? Can we just go back there? <laughs> Seriously. How old were you last year? I can't. I, I think I wasn't even born. Um, it just feels like that. You know, last year was so far away. Uh, anyway, uh, what day is it? So hard to keep track anymore under this quarantine. Ah, the happy song. It's either Wednesday or Friday. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffy. Uh, from welcome. Spoons at Jeffy is Fat. Uh, New Year's Day was last month. April Fool's Day is in June. Okay. <laughs> On the adjusted Pat Gray calendar. Uh, Pastor Sam Burton, you know what America needs to stay afloat? Americans to go back to work. That's right. Amen. It's working pretty well for Sweden. Just saying. Yeah, I keep going back to that. You know, there are other ways to go about this. And Sweden seems to be doing as well or better than anybody else who are taking all of the draconian right-sapping uh, measures that everybody's taking. Meanwhile, they've got half of the infections that Austria does, who has, and Austria shut down their, their country. But Sweden is going to work every day. They've got their restaurants and bars and movie theaters open. I don't know. It seems to be doing well for them. From Leanne, thanks for pushing me to deep depression. Oprah running? So <laughs> glad it was fake. Yeah. Yeah, us too. Sorry. Uh, Ryan Patrick, thankfully, that was an April Fool's joke. I almost... Called out of work and started drinking some red stripes. Yeah, well, if you missed this, the uh, very beginning mm. of the show today, go back and listen to the podcast shortly. Yeah, well, I mean, here's a little... Oh, oh you got a little Here's taste. the gist of it. Okay. Think that when you have that many people whose opinions you value coming at you, yeah, running, it's worthy to run for of president. Mm. thinking about. If yeah. God actually wanted me to run, wouldn't God kind of tell me? Mm. I do feel that I have heard that. Oh. I could mm. be a leader of the free world. <laughs> it's in my spirit. It's my DNA. Yeah. I am running for president of the United States. Boom. Okay. There it is. So, yeah, the reason you weren't hearing about it anywhere else, and it wasn't just a Pat Gray exclusive. Well, it was a Pat Gray exclusive uh, uh, news story uh, because it wasn't true. <laughs> just a little April Fool's fun. That's all. From Stinky Biscuit. Because, uh, oh, this is for the scammers who are scamming the elderly under this, uh, you know, during this crisis. Stinky Biscuit tweets, because eternity in normal hell isn't bad enough. Yes, they're going to be sentenced to South Hell, 
where it burns just a little bit hotter and just a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, from Brian Moore, for the people that are screaming, that are scamming the elderly, there will be an urn in China waiting for you. <laughs> uh, from I've seen your hernia. In case Judy's radio stopped working after the Oprah announcement, you guys better call her. Oh, I, I don't think that Judy did not come to mind during that segment for me. Uh, Tricia Sanders tweets, calling Trudeau a hoser. Spit out some coffee on that one. Yeah. Land of the Fleek, I'm 100% convinced that Canada wants the border to stay open because when they need actual health care, they're going to need a way into America. Uh-huh. Oh. Nailed it. Well, because uh, we're all lost without help from celebrities, fortunately, Kate Winslet has stepped up to the plate and shared some of her, you know, incredible wisdom with us. Here it is. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. On how, how to stop the spread. In the movie Contagion, I played an epidemiologist trying to stop the spread of a hypothetical virus. Oh, so she knows. Role, yeah. I spent time with some of the best public health professionals in the world. And what was one uh, of the most important things they taught me? What was it? Wash your hands okay. like your life depends on it. Uh, okay. Because right now, in particular, yeah. it just might. It just might, right. Or yeah. the life of someone you love, mm-hmm. or even the life of someone you might not know, but is still deserving of your consideration. Mm-hmm. Like the people on the front lines of this fight right now, the doctors and the healthcare doctors. providers. The people who are still working in the grocery stores or delivering food to your homes, which is where you should be right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, a little bit powerless at the moment, here's something that we can all do to make a difference. And it doesn't require a medical degree or a microscope or a ton of knowledge. Oh, I'm in. What you got? Soap. Oh, and soap, okay, water. and and water, okay. Are all uh, you need. Just uh, pause it for a second. When she said soap and, I was going to go with milk. I, I thought it was going to be soap <laughs> right. and milk. Right, I could see that. Yeah, uh-huh. I didn't know. Motor oil? I, 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 I was, my Ooh. second choice, first choice was milk, second choice was soap yeah. and motor oil. Well, thankfully we have um, Kate Winslet here to, right. get, to steer you in the right direction. She sent me straight. I got to tell you, man, there's nothing and water. sadder than a bored... Celebrity on lockdown right now. And there's more. <laughs> a lot so more. Soap. Okay. And water. 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 Right, all right. You need. Oh, that's all you need. You had to look at her cue card for that. Watch, doesn't need Watch her eyes. To be that hot. But she's going to explain this process. And most any soap will do. Okay. The way soap works <laughs> is that mine. one end of the soap molecule the binds with the water. <laughs> and the other end binds to the grease on your hands. <laughs> the virus uh-huh. is washed away with that grease when the soap molecule attaches uh-huh. to it. What? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. A scientist taught me that. <laughs> nice little lem- lesson in chemistry here. This is good. They also taught me to uh-huh. wash my hands for 20 seconds, 20 seconds, which is roughly how long this segment has Oh, I thought it was 20 minutes uh-huh. already. It's like eternity. Two, one. <laughs> Remember, that there is only one way to get COVID-19. Okay. Right, if right. you come in direct contact with a droplet with a drop from the cough or a sneeze of an infected person. Person. And that droplet okay. finds its way into your eyes, nose, nose or, or mouth. mouth. Gross but true. That's why people need to cover their mouths mm-hmm. like this. <coughs> <laughs> because COVID-19 <laughs> can also live on surfaces. Or as scientists call them, so fomites. Fomites. a lot of right. scientists do like to have... All right, can we pause this for a moment, too? Because there's a lot more information she dispenses here. And I don't mean to talk down to you. It's, the, it's just that you're so stupid, I have to try to make you understand what it is I'm saying to you. And it's going to take some time. Uh, there's a lot more that she shares here that could save your life. Mm. And I, I don't want you to miss any of it. Because... Good. You know, as she's kind of pointing out, she's above the rest of us because she's a celebrity. And she's played a doctor on TV. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Or or movies. Uh, yeah. And so uh, she knows what she's talking about. What she's... She, she, just, yeah. she just might be the person that saves civilization here. She definitely doesn't have her lines memorized yet, though. Uh, no, noticed. she does not. My goodness. Could no, you look at the camera one time? Reading from the cue card or... Uh, teleprompter, whatever she's got there at home. Uh, 888 Much more information to be dispensed by Kate. Don't miss it. Next. 
Thanks for being with us. 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, where Just Too Muck and Fudge tweets, uh, would I get the subtle nuances of COVID-19 since I didn't have COVID-18? No, you wouldn't understand it. So <laughs> I don't recommend it. I really don't. And frankly, I hadn't seen one through 18. So imagine how lost most wow. of us would be. Yeah, just lost. Uh, Libertarian Ninja tweets, the real reason that Texas won't allow people from Louisiana in is because LSU beat Texas in football, basketball, and baseball all in the same year. (laughs) Uh, From Cajun Ben, I say we continue to shut off all travel from China until they stop eating bats, pangolins, and you know the thing, et cetera. (laughs) So gross. Yeah. Speaking of which... And if you're eating breakfast, uh, you might want to turn this down a little bit. But they they are back to selling all of that stuff in the markets again, Stop. including that market where this supposedly all started with the bat. So the vendors in Wuhan have opened back up, and they're selling everything from peacocks to kangaroos. And what are they supposed to do? Starve? <laughs> uh, I think there's a happy medium between a peacock and starvation. I, okay. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. An occasional camel. They eat cats. What? Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you... If you're in China, what are you going to get a camel to drag to the market and... Hey, imagine. I, what? I, I had no idea anybody on the planet ate camels. Oh, man. Fried hump. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Fried hump is good. Oh, man. You're oh. bellying up to the table for seconds on that. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, give me the fried hump. Fried hump. In a delicious butter sauce. Mm. Oh. Okay. Dinner bell is ringing now. Okay, let's be honest. When you add in delicious butter sauce to anything, <laughs> it does sound good, It then. almost works. <laughs> Gross. They also eat wolf pups. That doesn't seem nice. Uh, crocodiles, dogs, of course. bats are, of course, on the menu, mm-hmm. uh, snakes, mm-hmm. fox, Mm-mm. deer, ostriches, and hedgehogs are among the things that you're going to find on the menu, uh, even now at those wet markets in, in China. I, what does it take to learn the lesson? What has to happen? Does everybody in China have to die before you get, hey, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Maybe we stop eating this kind of stuff. Yeah, and you've got a, uh, a pat head, uh, dead bod blog, who uh, says, that while a criticism of China eating bats, civet, and other exotic animals is warranted, it's important to keep in mind why they eat these things. It's a culture slash civilization starved for protein. Their totalitarian government is starving them. Mm. That might be a fair point. Mm-hmm. Still gross. Uh, yeah. I'm going to die before I eat a wolf pup. Yeah, but you try the fried hump, right? And a delicious I'm, butter sorry, sauce. Right. You, you, you sold me on the butter sauce, <laughs> okay. so I'm not going to lie. Fried hump it is. <laughs> From JF May. First of all, Jeffy is right. Ozark is more important. I couldn't even make it through 20 minutes of Tiger King. Mm. Uh, and from Sabes84. Hey, Pat. Sabes from SD here. Is that South Dakota or San yes. Diego? No, South Dakota. Okay, all right. Since you're always flipping the switch to shut down the country, I figured you'd be the guy to ask. Is it the same switch to turn it back on? If so, could you please do that? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Uh, I want us to turn it back on so badly. You're not ready to do that? Nah, see, I don't make that decision. Somebody's going to have to call me and tell me to switch it back on. Oh, what's the number again? Uh, I don't know. If 18. The number is 18. <laughs> 18, yeah. Tampa Ken uh, tweets, why are people canceling April Fool's Day? We need humor at this time. Well, we didn't We didn't cancel it. Um, we we celebrated it with uh, with Oprah's running for president. I you know? think that when you have that many yeah. people whose mm-hmm. opinions you value coming at you, Saying to run it's for president. worthy of huh? mm-hmm. thinking about. Thinking if God about. actually yeah. wanted me to run, wouldn't God kind of tell me? Mm-hmm. I do feel that I have heard that I okay. could be no. a leader of the free world. <laughs> it's in my spirit, it's my oh. DNA. I am running for president of the United States. <laughs> and there you have it. And there you have it, our April Fool's uh, offering for the day. <laughs> um, also, we, we hadn't finished up the Kate Winslet thing. Now, she showed us how to wash her hands. Okay. Surprisingly, it was with something called soap and water. 
I, I, wow. That's that is stunning. an interesting combination. When it you is. think of, you know, you think of peanut butter and jelly. Uh-huh. And then you think of soap and what? Those huh. two don't normally, you don't think of them like a... She even went through the process of what you do. You uh-huh. know, she washed her hands there for 20 seconds. But there's <clears throat> so much more wisdom that she has to share. Oh, well, great. If you come in direct contact with a droplet from a cough or a sneeze oh, so of okay. an infected person, Pass and that droplet finds its way into your eyes, nose, or mouth. Mm-hmm. Gross but true. That's why people need to cover their mouths oh, like this. <laughs> right, like that. Okay. Because COVID-19 can also live on surfaces, or as scientists call them, fomites. Fomites. The lovely scientists do like to have special words for yeah. everything. Fomites include everything from cardboard boxes that you might receive your vitamin supplies, your pet food, oh, or no. even your baby milk formula, oh, to no. stainless steel forks, to carpeting and bedding and clothes. Huh. Depending oh. on the surface, <laughs> COVID-19 surface. can live there from a few hours to a few days. So mm. wipe down surfaces that are frequently used with a disinfectant. With a disinfectant. And here are the rules for that. Oh, spray. got real spray. Wait four minutes. Wait. And then wipe. Wipe. Yes, it takes four minutes for a disinfectant to do its job. Pause. Oh, wow. That, avoid- that, that I honestly I gonna, did not know. I was about to say, I didn't know Is that, that either. Is that true? I, know. I, I don't think guess. I don't know. It's uh, Kate Winslet. She must be right. right? She's been in movies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and she knows about soap and water. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah, she was right about soap and water. Yeah, so she must so. be right about the... You know, I didn't know you had to wait four minutes. Nobody <laughs> waits four minutes before they wipe a surface. Oh, no one. and see all these toilet liquors probably wipe down the seat oh, and then wait four minutes oh. and they got the COVID. Oh, wow. That'll right. learn you. Let's see what else she has to say. And avoid touching your face. Okay. It's not easy. No, but it's, it's not. it's an important one. Because if you touch a surface with your hands surface? and then you touch your face, right. you can get infected. Oh my. So to put it bluntly, the health of our society is quite literally quite literally in your in hands. Your hands. <laughs> I know this is quite, hard, quite. and this is new, mm-hmm. and it's scary. Right, but, but you really can defend yourself and the people you love mm-hmm. with a bar of soap, a sink, some water, water, and by listening to the public health experts where you live. We all want a cure. We do. But until we have one, we need to be that for each other. Wow, beautiful. Starting now. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. That was. Thank you. Yeah, depending on the... Uh, pathogen you're going after Mm -hmm. uh it could take uh 30 seconds to well this one says three minutes so she obviously lied but e coli you can only you only need 30 seconds to kill that Hmm. when the disinfectant makes contact with it nice yeah all right well we learned something new according to this website i mean plus it's been quite some time and maybe it's just me i give you maybe it's just me that i've used a bar of soap whether it was milk soap or whatever. That's, I, I that is real, true. I, I, I bet it's been 20 that, years since I've used a bar I, of soap. Really? I yeah. know. Huh. Yeah, I always use yeah. the, you know, the... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Body wash for yeah. our body... Mm-hmm. The hand soap, bottle. the liquid soap. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, much more convenient. And it just seems more uh, hygienic. It just point yes, of, it does. Yeah, point mm-hmm. of clarification regarding Jeffy specifically. Jeffy, you're talking about... You're not talking about soap in general, right? You're talking about uh, a bar of soap. When, when respect to you, I just wanted to, to be be certain what we were referring to. Um, as Why? Far as the soap that yeah. you use. Okay, so as long as you're using <laughs> soap, I mean, it could have gone either way. Love you. Miss you. <laughs> Love you too. Uh, all right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. This all brings us to uh, ABC's John Carl, uh, who is pissed off at Marco Rubio. Oh, because Marco Rubio actually called out the media. He said, uh, some in our media can't contain their glee and delight in reporting that the U.S. has more coronavirus cases than China. Is that not a fact? That is a true statement there, that they can't contain their glee. They are so happy to report that so that they can attack Trump over it. They hate Trump so much uh, that, that they have taken China's side over their own nation in this fight against this virus. Uh, He said, beyond being grotesque, it's bad journalism. We have no idea how many cases China really has, but without any doubt, it's significantly more uh, than they admit to. Yeah. So John Carl, all indignant about that, here's what he had to say. That some in our media Mm -hmm. can't contain their glee and delight in reporting that the U.S. has more coronavirus cases than China. How do you respond to that tweet coming from a U.S. senator? Uh, 
It is, Sonny, it is outrageous. Oh, wow. It is yeah. wrong. It is hurtful. I, I called out Senator Rubio, and I'll do it's it again hurtful. now, to say, who are you talking we heard about, his feelings. Senator? And oh, more God. importantly, to tell him, Senator Rubio apologized for that. That tweet oh, hit okay. just after uh -huh. my friends, at our friends at CBS News, learned that one of their colleagues, one of their co-workers, died from oh, coronavirus. Stop uh, it. A, a colleague at NBC died at coronavirus. We have at least two members of the White House press corps who are now suspected to have coronavirus. Who does Marco Rubio think is taking joy and glee at more people being sick? That's an outrageous statement. No, it's, it's not. It's a hurtful statement. It's the kind of thing that I wrote the book about, about the idea of mm -hmm. people Let putting out misinformation book. intended <laughs> to further divide us. We've got to put a pause Unreal, on, that kind of, Unreal. Uh, on that kind of talk now, especially from somebody like Marco Rubio, somebody who I've also <laughs> known for a long time, and I know knows better than to say something like that. That is, uh, that is oh my God. amazing. They can say, the, the media can say whatever they want about Trump and Republicans. All the hateful, nasty mud they sling at Donald Trump. The most vile, hateful slop anyone's ever heard. But how dare you ask a question about the sacred media in this country and whether or not they're excited to blame Trump instead of China. How, How dare, dare you? you? How dare you? <laughs> wow. I, I love the indignant there, the indignance uh, of John Carl there. He wow. just, they can dish it out all they want, but they sure can't take it. No kidding. Come down off your little high reporter shelf, John. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's agonizing. Uh, and I'm surprised. I'm glad to see Marco Rubio actually is still alive and out there. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> We almost never hear from him anymore. I know. I know. He's kept a low profile. Uh, Chris Hayes was also upset over uh, um, what's going on with the White House and and the the president, the fact that the president is getting airtime every day at, what, 5 o'clock? <laughs> what does he think he is, the president? I know. I mean, Why would on. you cover that? Uh, in the middle of a global pandemic, wants to talk uh, to the people? In part because he is combative, in part because he does lie, and you yes. can catch him in those lies and hold him accountable, but that doesn't make for an effective public health response. Oh, brother. Yeah, that's why he's bragging about the ratings. It's obviously above my pay grade. I don't make the call that we take them or, or, or not, but it no, seems uh, crazy to me that everyone's seems crazy still taking them when you got the my pillow guy uh, getting up there talking about reading the Bible. Uh, I mean, wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. What's crazy, Chris, is that anyone is taking your show live. That's or <laughs> recorded for that matter. That's what's crazy. Uh, and the hate and vitriol over Mike Lindell uh, from the you know the my pillow guy having the odd. Uh, Audacity to mention the Bible and God. These godless animals on these left-wing networks just can't handle it. They can't take no it. Kidding. I mean, he, this guy is uh, just Mike Lindell alone is an American dream story. Right? Yes, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Bottomed out to top of the world, and now he's trying to help in this pandemic to the United States. And oh my gosh, yeah, he make, mentioned the Bible. Making fifty thousand masks. How many masks has Chris Hayes made? For the country, <laughs> uh, less. I'm pretty sure less than fifty thousand. Yeah, Do you know that for yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. I I, okay. I feel confident in that. Now okay. I haven't counted all the masks he's made, but I don't think it would be that hard. Wow. I think no. it's less than you fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and and Mike Lindell wasn't forced to do that. He did that of his nope. own volition. Yes, he did. He's he's a patriot who's trying to help out, and he still gets pummeled uh, by the news media. It's despicable. These people have absolutely no shame whatsoever. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also, the Cuomo brothers—they uh, seem to be creating quite a nice buzz uh, between the two of them. Because apparently, I don't know—is it nightly or is it weekly that Chris Cuomo has uh, Andrew <laughs> Cuomo on his show? Uh, people love this little uh, give and take from from these two guys. Um, but here's a. Uh, you, you want to start at March 6th? I, I do want to start at March 6th, where, where Andrew Cuomo is talking about stolen medical equipment. What? Wait. Yeah. Uh, apparently, medical equipment is being stolen. Here he is. Uh, one of the things we've heard from healthcare professionals, uh, there have been thefts of uh, uh, medical equipment right. uh, and masks. 
from hospitals, believe oh, it or not. People to stop stealing. Uh, not just people taking a couple or three. I mean, just actual uh, thefts mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. those Wait. products. Wait. Uh, I've asked the state police to do an investigation. Uh, look at marketplaces that are selling masks, uh, wow. et cetera, medical equipment, protective wear, sure. playing yeah. into right. this, exploiting the anxiety. Okay. March 6th, uh, March Andrew 6th. Cuomo, governor of New York, uh, talking about stolen medical supplies. Well, that's ancient history, uh, because Monday night, Chris Cuomo brought the issue up again to his brother on TV, and uh, here's here's what they what he had to say. That about is really it a clarion call uh, for the need to be mm. calling out anybody who can come to help. It'll be interesting to see who responds. Now, the president said something today mm. that I want your take on uh, the answer that you've given so far. You said you don't know uh, what he means, but I, I want you to think about it a little bit more. Let's play the sound about what the president suggested might be happening with some of the equipment that we are all desperate to find for okay. our healthcare professionals. All right. It's a New York hospital, very, it's packed all the time. How do you go from 10 to 20 to 300,000, 10 to 20,000 masks to 300,000, mm -hmm. even though this is different, something's going on. Uh -huh. And you ought to look into it as reporters. Okay. Where are the masks going? Are they going out the back door? How do you go from 10,000 to 300,000? It's a good question. Uh, and we have that in a lot of different places. So somebody should probably look into that. Yeah, you think? Now, mm -hmm. you, you said, I don't know what he means. You know what he means. He's saying that somebody's stealing this PPE stuff or that something's being done with it that is wrong, which is the implication is I'm doing the right thing. I'm getting them the right things in New York. I don't know what they're doing with them. That's the implication. What's your response? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, my response is, first of all, if I say I, I don't know what he means, you can't tell me that, yes, I do know what he means. <laughs> you might what do you think he could, that, you think he could <laughs> mean other than that? He could mean, yeah, I don't know. That's a very vague huh. thing. It went out the back know. door. I don't know. Maybe. What do you I don't mean know it went what out that the means? back door? What is it, a stray uh, cat? What you, it didn't go out the back door. He's saying well, somebody's taking something. I don't know something. what it is. Maybe it's the, the uh, door. Well, maybe that's what he means, but I don't know. It's a very vague reference. You what? should ask the president. Huh? Did he not remember what he said just weeks before? Uh, let's remind him. Uh, let's play that one more time. Back on March 6th, he seemed to know what the president was talking oh, about. Uh, one of the things we've heard from healthcare professionals. Right. Uh, there have been, uh, there been thefts, thefts of, uh, of, of medical equipment. Medical equipment. Uh, uh, and masks. And masks. From hospitals. Believe okay, it or not. enough. I mean, there it is right there. I can't, man. Yeah, Pat, that was that was when? March 6th Mar March. of 2020. What, 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 what's the date today? It is now April 1st, 2020. I mean, it, so It's almost 30 days. You can't remember. No, you. Thanks. I mean, please. <laughs> Jeffy's used that defense in court before. <laughs> you can tell he's practiced. Multiple times. I don't know. Multiple. How do these, again, you have to wonder, how do you think you're going to get, well, because they do get away with it. With everybody yeah. else in the media... Other than talk radio and Fox News, nobody's going to call them on that. And so everybody that watches their, you know, th their little echo chambers, watches and listens to their own e echo chambers, they won't know anything about him saying that on March 6th. It'll never be brought up. And, uh, and the president will be made to look like an idiot because he's insinuating masks are being stolen. Yeah, he's insinuating something that the governor... Uh, has already insinuated. Has already didn't even insinuate. Yeah. He flat out spelled it. Yeah. He spelled it out for us. Wow. Uh, also, I don't the, know what he means. No, I don't know what he means. It might, it might mean that. I don't know. Maybe it's a stray cat. Sure. I don't know. You have to ask him. <laughs> Shut up. It's just, it's it's incredible. Uh, and then they had their little uh, get together again on, on this uh, broadcast. The Cuomo brothers devolve into sparring over spaghetti sauce. <laughs> You know, you said something about yourself where you said, you know, I'm not yourself. really uh, good at cooking and, you know, I, I've, I've had to learn and do stuff with the kids. I don't know why you take your shot at that. I mean, you know, you, just because you don't cook. I mean, mom shares her Jeez. secrets about how to make sauce. Very few people. I mean, you shouldn't criticize yourself that you're not one of the people that mom saw as worthy <laughs> to, you know, teach how to cook and make tomato sauce. Shut up. Well, look, I, I'm sure she would have. It's just that you well, spent look. so much more time in the kitchen, Chris, than I did. 
uh, you were just available to her. You know, you had that, mm. uh, that uh, always like mom's little helper in the kitchen. I really respect <laughs> that. that so I think mm. it's because you were there and uh, always <laughs> under foot. Yeah, see, I don't see it that way. How many, I mean, you I don't spent see it years way. in the kitchen when you mm. think of it. I don't, I don't yeah. see it that way. I didn't spend years well, in the I didn't kitchen. Mean, but I, didn't I, mean to, I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> I didn't mean well, to offend you. Well, I think you did, but that's okay. There's no offense taken. That There's you no offense taken. No, but what I think, I'm no, saying no, is please. that you helped mom in the kitchen was a beautiful thing. I had to do work. I didn't help mom you know? in the kitchen. I, like, look at you're saying something a little different. She taught me things yeah. that she By chose way, not to yeah. teach you, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you don't have to play the sound. May I ask you a question? I just, hold on. Can I hold just on ask you a question? You, you have where a are you? I'm having a, where are you? Can I ask you where are you? I'm in the process of making a point is where I am. I'm in my basement. But where are you physically? I am in oh, my you're basement. In your basement. That's what I just said. Yeah, that's where I am. Are you in your basement? I see. Well, you spend yeah. a lot of time there, right? Christina says she sends you there a lot. So kitchen <laughs> and basement. That's where you spend Listen, your life. Okay. Here's what I'm trying Go to ahead. say. Did you I'm in the basement because right. this is uh -huh. where I had the availability yeah. to do this. Right now, I mm. need to uh, be working at home. That's why I'm here. But mom, you don't have to play the sound. But last night, I was doing what I do for my family, which mm -hmm. is make my mother's sauce. She taught me how to make the sauce, which is something is that is very coveted. And she said, I can only teach he, not she, he <laughs> who will carry it on best. And you will see the B-roll of me cooking. My mother we do, called we do me see and it. said, we see it right now. and I was listening to her favorite, one of her favorite songs, Andrea Bocelli. And you'll see I had a picture of her behind me, as I always do when I'm cooking <laughs> in the kitchen. I always have a picture yeah, of my oh mother my there God. to remember our bond uh, and how I care right. uh, for her, that she taught me how to make the sauce. She didn't teach anybody else. Right, and <laughs> she called me and said, is Andrew there? I said, no, mom, I'm all alone oh, here out wow, on the island with sad. my family. And she said, where is he? And I said, he's up in Albany in the house with the big gates and the attack dog. <laughs> oh, and she shit. said, oh, that's too bad. And I said, it's OK, mom. I love him and I'll make sauce yeah. for him, too. And she started to cry. <laughs> and then I said goodbye. <laughs> Wow, that was amazing. Ah, that's right. what happened. You've always Enough. been good at manipulating. <laughs> <You know. laughs> yeah, yes. I, I can't take it anymore. Oh, you know, oh, uh, interesting. Uh, well, first of all, Chris Cuomo, we wish him the best. He, he better yeah, stay in the basement yeah. there because he did test positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But what's fascinating is Andrew Cuomo. We talk about his popularity surging. He was at, five weeks ago, 36% approval in the state of New York. Today, was he really? Today he's at 87? 87. 87%. Wow. That's got a 51 points in three weeks. That's incredible. And it's, it's, and it's all perception is reality yeah. because he has done a crappy job, right? Right. But these press conferences, they are really good. Well, let's look at the let's look at the numbers <laughs> as compared to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. New York has 70, almost 76,000 people infected with 1,714 deaths. That is by far and away, I mean, by orders of magnitude, higher than anybody else in the country. Jersey is second at 18,000. That's, I mean, and his approval rating's going up? Hmm. I guess New Yorkers aren't that picky about, you know, oh, they, the job that's they, being done. They have centuries of not being <laughs> picky about who they put into office. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. All right. Uh, Jeffy, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again on uh, Friday, I guess, huh? Yeah, baby. Uh, meanwhile, everybody stay healthy and stay safe.